Well, November is Lung Cancer Awareness Month, and lung cancer is the leading cancer killer of men and women in the U.S. Joining us now from Catholic Health is Dr. Sherard Chandrika. Thank you, doctor, for joining us. And I think a lot of people might be surprised to hear it is the number one cancer killer. That's right. It is the number one cancer killer, both in men and women, in the United States and worldwide when we talk about uh, the cause of mortality from cancer. I, I was, you know, I kept looking at the numbers and actually, again, I was surprised that um, according to the American Lung Association, as many as 235,000 people will be diagnosed this year. So that's why you're here for us. We need some important information and, and, and let's start with, I'm guessing like with all cancers, early detection is the key. So um, please tell us about what we should be looking out for. Absolutely. So with lung cancer, unfortunately, in early stages, there may not be any signs or symptoms. It is a silent disease, at least in the initial stages. But as it progresses in advanced stages, patients may develop shortness of breath. They may start spitting up blood. They may have chest pain. And uh, as cancer further progresses, they may have uh, loss of weight, loss of appetite. They may develop further shortness of breath. And then depending on where the cancer is growing, if it is growing in an airway, then uh, they may develop a pneumonia next to the cancer and may develop all the symptoms of infection, pneumonia, such as fever, chills. Uh, if it goes to other organs, such as brain, they may develop stroke. So those are the main symptoms. But unfortunately, symptoms may not manifest until cancer is somewhat advanced. So that is um, part of the reason why the numbers are so bad. We don't even know you have lung cancer sometimes until it, it has um, gone on to other parts of the, uh, the body. Are there ways to be screened for early detection when, you know, before you have any of the, uh, more, the, the more serious symptoms? Yes. So the only way to be screened early for lung cancer is by doing a low dose CT scan of the chest. So there have been a lot of studies. People looked at sputum cytology, chest x-rays, but nothing really worked for detecting lung cancer early. The only way to definitively detect lung cancer in its early stage is by doing a low-dose CT scan of the chest. And by low dose, we mean that the amount of radiation that a patient might be exposed to is much lower than that of a conventional CT scan or a PET scan or a, or a CT angiogram. So it is only slightly more than the amount of radiation that they're exposed to in a chest X-ray. I feel so like according it, to, that's something that we're not getting routinely screened for, correct? That's right. The criteria is that uh, if somebody smoked more than 20 pack years, so pack years are calculated by number of packs smoked in a day multiplied by the number of years smoked. So for example, if somebody smoked one pack a year for 20 years, then they are a 20 pack year smoker. And if you are 50 and above of age, and if you didn't quit in the, in the recent 15 years, then uh, you are a candidate for lung cancer screening. So as of now, screening is said to be uh, most beneficial in the highest risk groups. So there are only certain populations which are offered screening as of now. But most of the leading insurances, most of the third party payers are covering for lung cancer screening. Is the biggest risk uh, a history, you had a history of smoking or you are a smoker right now? Uh, yes. So if you are a smoker right now, you are very high risk. But if you didn't quit in the past 15 years or so, you still continue to be a high risk candidate. And not only that, if you are exposed to secondhand smoke, then also you are very high risk to develop lung cancer. And not just with conventional cigarettes, even if you smoked cigars or uh, light cigarettes and filtered cigarettes or menthol cigarettes, your risk of developing lung cancer is still high. Hmm. So, and is there any evidence now that vaping would be also put you into the high risk category? Vaping is said to be dangerous too, 
and uh, is said to be associated with uh, all the problems because you are still exposed to chemicals. So vaping also might be associated with lung cancer risk. And, that, and the, the fear there is that so many young kids are, are vaping, you know, starting at a young age, thinking it's sort of safe when it is not. So let's talk about treatment. I'm sorry. That's what? extremely dangerous. Yeah. Yes. And let's talk about some of the treatments um, for lung cancer. Are we getting better with advancements in treatments? Absolutely. We are not where we used to be 10 years ago. There are newer treatments emerging almost every month. Now there are targeted therapies, there is personalized medicine. Now there are, there's so much research going on with lung cancer. We are not just limited to the conventional cytotoxic chemotherapies. We have um, uh, uh, medicines that we can give based on your genetic makeup, based on the uh, genetic mutations in the tumor itself. There is just so much more available. And the uh, uh, survival is much more extended uh, as compared to what it used to be 10 years ago. So it is a bad disease, but yes, there is so much hope. <laughs> I, I, I love hearing that, love hearing hope uh, with something right so deadly and that has taken um, you know, some of our family members. Very quickly, something we didn't cover maybe that just you wanna get out there that's good advice for our viewers? Uh, yes, there are so many things. I want to know, I want to let everybody know that even among women, Lung cancer is the number one cause of cancer deaths. And smoking, quitting smoking is helpful even after you're diagnosed with lung cancer. Because once you quit smoking, you uh, suffer lesser side effects from treatment and your survival is still prolonged. And you just uh, tolerate everything better. You tolerate treatments better. So at any stage, smoking helps. Hmm. Also avoiding air pollution in any form helps. And if you are living in an area where there is a lot of radon, then uh, it, it's very helpful to get your home tested by the state for radon because it is a number one uh, lung cancer, uh, cause of lung cancer in patients uh, who don't smoke. Hmm. So, you know, getting tested for radon is another very important thing that might be helpful to prevent lung cancer. Oh, doctor, thank you so much for joining us uh, with November being Lung Cancer Awareness Month. And um, actually, Thursday is the Great American Smokeout, so maybe a few people there could stop smoking for 24 hours and for good after that. Doctor, thank you stop so much. Stop smoking yes. and get screened. <laughs> thank you very, very much. Thanks for having me.